Welcome back. I'm prepping for a race tomorrow, so I don't have a lot of time, but I want to touch base really quickly on safety and some of the mistakes that I've made that I'm now fixing. The first problem to solve, and the easiest, was the harnesses. All harnesses expire after two or three years. Sometimes those expiration dates don't really matter in the case of like autocross or rallycross, but for hill climbs, we're pretty picky about this stuff. So I get two years from the date of manufacture and these expired last month, which means they're due to re be replaced. I could probably use that for the passenger seat because we never have a passenger on a race run, unlike rallies. So I'm just gonna throw those into the passenger side when I get a seat in there. And I've replaced them with the exact same thing, just newer. I've been very happy with uh, race whip harnesses. They're inexpensive, which means it's easy to stay up to date if you can afford something better, like a cam lock harness. Race whip makes cam locks as well. That's a little bit faster to get in and out of, but at the end of the day, whatever you have, as long as it's safe, is good and workable. So that's first problem solved, I've got a new harness. The second problem that I have is my fire extinguisher. I had to use this one day while I was welding, something caught fire, I couldn't just blow it out, so it needs to be recharged, but this is an ABC extinguisher, these are generally fine, but I figured it was a good time for me to upgrade to a Halotron. Problem three is padding. Now, this padding is very, very specific. This is SFI. It's uh, kind of flame retardant. You can't use like a pool noodle or something. That's not going to add any safety first and foremost, but it'll, it'll turn into a flaming gel, kind of like napalm if you ever get in a fire and fires happen in, in race cars. So we want to try to mitigate that as much as possible. But as you can see, this one's starting to fall apart. It's getting a little brittle. So it was time to replace these as well. These need to be anywhere that could possibly come in contact with you anywhere on the cage. So uh, cages move quite a bit if you're in, in a pretty bad wreck and those are the ones where you really want the padding. So I would pad all the way down the A-pillar. I would pad the bottom of the A-pillar going down beside your leg. Pad all the way down here because all of this stuff can move in if you hit something hard. Uh, maybe I can dig up a picture for you. So yeah, I, I replaced a good amount of this. I haven't replaced all of it because not all of it is in as bad a shape as this piece. And the other half of this piece hasn't seen as much sun, so it's in quite a bit better condition. It may be, it may be fine. I think I'm going to reuse some of that. But if it starts to come apart like this and starts to get brittle, you know, it's time to replace. The last problem that I'm solving is the seat. The old seat that I had in here was pretty good, but it was a little bit too high. It didn't have as much of a layback as this does, meaning uh, my butt was further back, so I was sitting more upright. So my helmet was quite a bit higher in the car and there wasn't any danger of my head hitting the roof and it was still well under the top of the uh, roll bar but I was in between this A pillar tube and this roof bar so my helmet was basically caught and getting in and out in a hurry was more difficult than I want it to be um, if I'm ever in a fire in the car I want to be able to get out as quickly as possible it's still a little difficult with this 20 degree layback seat instead of the 10 degree that I had in here, but it's a lot better. It's a lot more manageable. And I get the added safety of the halo. So I've just welded all that up. I need to pull the seat out, paint everything so it doesn't rust, and then do the final installation. And then I think I'm ready to race.
Obviously this isn't a real paint job, I just threw some plastic sheeting on there and threw a half can of rattle can black at it. It's fine for day before the race, I'm just trying to cover up the bare metal, trying to cover up my welds and make the car look a little presentable, but I'm not, I'm not obsessing over the appearance of a race car. Um, maybe in the future I'll give it a proper paint job and make it look nice, but for now, presentable is perfectly fine. I don't really care that much. What I do care about is the steering wheel. So when I moved the seat down, I moved the steering wheel right into my line of sight. So I think I'm gonna move the steering wheel down a few inches before I leave for the race event. I'm just gonna let this paint dry a little, let the fumes disperse some, and I'll get right back to it. All right, the car is all set. I've got the seat harness back in. I've got the new fire extinguisher. I've got my gauges remounted. They were held in with zip ties before. Now they have actual nuts and bolts to hold them in. Um, I welded in a steering wheel spacer so the steering wheel comes down just a little bit. All the paint's dried on it. All I really have to do is throw the hardtop back on. Then I drive out to the campground. I think I'll get there after dark, so probably no more footage tonight. I'm not gonna be able to bring lights or anything because this is my support vehicle. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the box truck that I have been using as a support vehicle, hopefully tomorrow. I'll, I'll catch you up. Anyway, tomorrow is practice day, so I'll we'll get to shake down the car a little bit and see how it feels. And Sunday is timed race day. And this event's really interesting because it is the first time that I get to run Mount Escutney Long since my very first hill climb, which was five years ago. I've made it to the race event. Everything's gone pretty well so far. I did find a tech screw, uh, a self-tapping sheet metal screw, in one of my front tires. Um, we caught that at tech and I basically got ready to plug it with a plug kit where you start with a reamer and then you force your plug through. Um, but I couldn't get the reamer to go through. So that means the carcass of the tire isn't compromised and I basically have one more wear mark in the tire. It's just, just a uh, surface level damage to the outer rubber tread blocks. So that's pretty good. I've already missed a little more than half the day of racing today, but I think I'll only get a familiarization run in today. We'll see how that goes, and uh, at the very least, I'll get to see what the top of the hill looks like. I haven't been there in five years. Pretty excited. All right, Saturday was a success. Things went well. I got a run in. Um, there weren't any real problems with the car. There were a couple of suspected problems, but that was it. And now I am ready for race day. I need to get over for the safety meeting. And then um, I think we're, we're good to race up the hill. Should be a lot of fun today. And uh, I'm gonna try to get all my runs in in the morning because the afternoon's probably gonna be really hot again. And the sun was right in my face in the afternoon. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to put down any kind of competitive times in the afternoon. Might even call it a day early if things go well. We'll see. We'll see how it goes.
Now, through that entire run, I was kind of off my groove. I wasn't feeling right. It, it felt like I had heat stroke or something. I just, I wasn't on the ball. Uh, I really noticed it when I went for a third gear shift a few times, couldn't get it into third, and just hung out in fifth for pretty much the rest of the run. And it's unlike me. I, I didn't feel like myself. I wasn't really having fun. I hung out until about lunchtime, and I wasn't really feeling any better after that, so I decided to call it and go home. There's no real sense in risking the car, myself, my season, having to work on it more over the winter, and having to deal with the, the ride home. That's just, it's not how I want to end my season, especially when there isn't even a class win on the line. Like, nobody in my class has enough season points to be in the running for the championship. So, at the end of the day, or I guess the middle of the day in this case, it really wasn't worth trying to push and make this happen. Um, I called it quits, I went home, uh, I, I didn't really feel better the next day, so I went into the doctor and I found out I had an inner ear infection the whole time. Now, if you've ever had an inner ear infection, this was the first that I think I've ever had, um, your balance is gone. It's absolutely gone, and that throws off everything that you do from even just walking. Driving is much more difficult, and I didn't really make the connection until I heard the diagnosis, and I, like, yeah, then it all clicked. It made perfect sense. So, we're ending the season on kind of a low note, but also a really high note, because I didn't break the car. It's still in good shape. It's still running great. And I think I can just park that for the winter and ignore it. And what that means is I can get back to the Datsun and work on that through the winter. Hopefully have it ready for the summer. Um, I've simplified my plan on the Datsun a little bit, but we'll get to that in another episode. For now, that's the end of the 2019 season. Now we start the 2020 season. Thank you all for watching, and you'll see me in the next episode. Bye.